Hey, welcome everybody. All right, sorry I'm running a little bit behind. Behind uh, my uh, computer was taking up a lot of uh, CPU space. Had a lot of stuff going on in the background. I needed to go out and close up, and hopefully it's all working now uh, just fine. And uh, how are y'all this evening? Let's see here. Let's see if I can get some things set up properly. All right. So, how's everybody doing tonight? Uh, you should have um, video and audio now. Everything should be uh, coming through loud and clear. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. Testing one, two, three. <laughs> let me know if y'all can hear me and we'll uh, get this party started. All right. Welcome, Stephen. Welcome, Jer. Welcome, Wayne. Hello, Debbie. All right. Sounds wonderful. Looks wonderful. How's things going? Okay. All right. Well, listen, uh, tonight we're going to, you know, I've, I've been kind of monitoring. Uh, I haven't replied much into the Facebook group, but I've been monitoring uh, the Facebook group and I see there's some questions like gadgets, you know, keyhole gadgets, uh, chamfer gadget. Um, and uh, I'm even going to explore the dovetail gadget with you guys a little bit uh, tonight because uh, I want to take, uh, you know, on that jewelry box we created last week, I'd like to, other than it being box joints, I'd like to be able to alter it a little bit and maybe put some dovetails on it uh, for dovetail cutting and show you guys how, to, how you can use the dovetail gadget to cut dovetails on the um, CNC table. Now, with the dovetail gadget, you do have uh, your fillets, your dog bone fillets and things. Um, it's not, you know, like a traditional dovetail. Uh, it, um, it has the little fillets where the router bit comes out, but down the road, we'll explore the possibilities of, you know, talking about how to set up to do actual dovetails on the CNC machine with a regular, you know, um, dovetail bit versus like an end mill or a ball nose. So, uh, and then from there, we're going to, you know, uh, open up for some general questions. I saw that, you know, there's a lot of questions out there. Uh, I think, um, Baron had a question and, and I think he resolved his issue data, but talked about, you know, static, uh, cling or static buildup on vacuums and, you know, uh, how to correct that process. But the, um, you know, so we'll open up the floor for questions and everything. Uh, but I do want to explore some of these gadgets so you can get the most of your, uh, Vetric software, uh, by utilizing these tools. Uh, and that way, with me showing you, uh, you don't have to share, you know, videos that are made by other companies like Stepcraft. <laughs> I caught that. All right. Anyway. Okay. So, I can't knock people that make good videos, so I'm, I'm not going to complain. But that was a different method. That had nothing to do with the gadgets. So, it was just a way to make dovetails. All right. So let's uh, look over in our Facebook real quick and see what we've got here. Um, remember, if you do not have access to the YouTube channel, um, you uh, you can come in. You can go on the Facebook group and uh, on the post where I posted the link to this video, you can comment and everything. And it'll be treated just like the uh, the channel. Um, you know, the channel chat, the live chat and everything. And down the road, you know, you could always create a YouTube account so you can come in and participate with us on these live chats. One of these days, I'd like to get uh, one of you guys, uh, you know, to get your break out your, uh, I'll pick a, pick a few members or something. We'll pick out, uh, break out your webcams and microphones and we'll do a, we'll put a panel together and do a, uh, you know, a, a digital wood carver kind of live event, you know, get some of the users involved and where people can peg them with questions as well too and just see what they're doing with their shops and things. You never know. I'm trying to take this someplace. All right. With that being said, we've already got a late start. So let's jump right into the Vetrix software. Now I am setting up my Vetrix software.
Uh, we lost audio for a moment because I forgot to set the microphone up on that screen. All right. Um, anyway, I was switching back and forth between the screens just to make sure everything, uh, whether it looked good or didn't look good, uh, it does. It, it, it switches whenever the switch is made on the computer. So uh, that's me. It's on my side. I have to set up for all of my screenshots. I, uh, each screenshot has its own individual microphone setup. And so I had, the, I had to set the microphone for the screen that I'm on now. All right. So we're all back now. Okay. All right, so we should be uh, drawing and flowing, and, and you should be able to hear me now. And I do apologize about that. Uh, I didn't have things set up correctly in the beginning. So for tonight's project, we are going to work on a uh, single-sided setup. We're going to work with a board that is 15 inches in length along the x-axis. That's how I'm going to clamp that board. Uh, it's going to be eight inches on the width of the board along the y-axis, and it's going to be three quarters of an inch thick. I'm going to be touching off on the material surface, and I will be using my um, quick set tool, so I will be working off the bottom left corner. So I'm going to click OK, and we will start from there. Now, that reminds me uh, for you guys and girls um, that uh, ordered the quick sets. Your uh, quick sets went out in the mail. Uh, some of them are we're still waiting. Uh, some of them will be shipped. Uh, of course, today was Martin Luther King's uh, birthday, so there was no shipping today. Uh, but the other parts will be going out, and you'll be getting them shortly. Uh, there are still a few of you. I don't know if you're part of the class or not, uh, but check your inbox um, and, uh, on your on your Facebook inbox and. Uh, there's about six the invoices that I sent out that uh, haven't been paid. So if you're wondering where your uh, quick set tool is, it uh, hadn't shipped yet because I'm still waiting on the invoice. <laughs> um, and I don't know which six it is. I'm not going to go through all that now. I'll, I'll email you uh, five or six individuals individually. All right. So let's talk about chamfers and what we have in gadgets. Not chamfers. Chamfers is one of the gadgets. But let's talk about gadgets. So... Um, the gadget library is located on uh, the vetric.com website. So if we popped open a web browser and went to vetric.com, v e c t r i c dot com. Yes, Wayne, you're waiting for your invoice because uh, I've got to uh, send it over to you. So I'll send that over to you tonight um, for your uh, local address. Now, on the Vetric.com website, uh, we're going to go over to Downloads, and we're going to go down to Gadgets under the Downloads menu, and we can go in from there. We can go into the Gadget Library. Now, one of the things I'd like you, you might even not know this about the Vetric website. Um, let's back up for one second because this is important. Um, you know, I can teach you a lot of very cool tips and tricks during classes and things like that. But Vetric has also done that for you as well. We know that under support that you've got training materials, right? And under those training materials... Uh, we've got, you know, we can go into the training libraries of our tutorials, uh, you know, with all of those tutorials and everything. Um, and we know that, you know, we can go to, uh, you know, projects and under cool stuff and get some free projects to uh, download and carve and things that Vetric offers. They put out new projects very, very often. But one of the things you might not know is the videos that Vetric has created for some tips and tricks. So let's look at uh, some of them and let's see what uh, they've got. So under support, tips and tricks videos. So if we go under tips and tricks, there are all kinds of tips and tricks, uh, you know, for doing different things. Somebody not too long ago, I can't remember who it was, somebody sent me 
and said they wanted to carve kind of a 3D book, you know, and everything. Well, here's a tip and trick on distorting text for that book, you know, a 3D type card book and everything. Um, there's, there's uh, you know, tips and tricks on creating efficient tool paths. Um, you know, jo you know, grouping and joining vectors, modeling and framing, uh, all kinds of tips and tricks videos that will help you out and make you better. Um, and like I said, I, I try to provide as many little tips here and there, but be sure to check out some of these little tips and trick videos. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, pick up a new thing here or there, uh, which would be great. All right. So anyway, back to our gadgets in the gadget library. In the gadget library, we'll find things like drawing tools such as, uh, you know, the circle resizer, the flute gadget, um, gear maker, spiral gadget. Now we already have a fluting tool uh, in 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 our Vetric software toolpath, uh, so I doesn't I don't think that that flute gadget varies much from that uh, tool. But uh, you know valances um, down here, your box creators. You know making dovetail boxes and creating all the sides of a box, whereas dovetails on all the sides. That's a really cool little tool. The chamfer gadget. I know uh, Eugen, I don't know if he's in the class tonight, uh, was having a problem with chamfers. Uh, Dado toolpath creator, dovetail gadget, uh, rounded toolpath, and the half toner. Uh, if any of you have never tried out the half toner, give that a shot. The half toner is a very cool gadget that is used to create some stunning half tone effects for your photographs and things. Um, and uh, basically it creates an effect uh, by drilling holes at different depths with either a V-bit or a Bono's bit. The darker the contour, the deeper and wider the holes get and uh, really creates some uh, neat effects. So be sure to check out the gadgets. Now when you find a gadget like the dovetail gadget or the chamfer gadget, you want to download it. So basically you click on read more and download and then you'll come down here and download that gadget. Now that gadget will most likely get downloaded right into your, um, <clears throat> will get uh, downloaded right into your downloads folder. Well, we need to move it to the appropriate folder. So let's imagine that uh, we go into my downloads folder here and I go down to my gadgets and let's see if I have a gadget laying around my spiral gadget here so we'll find that gadget file that we downloaded and we need to move it to our C drive so under this PC over on the left and I'm gonna I'm gonna right click and cut this gadget from here or copy it whatever you want to do I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna go into the C drive on this PC I'm gonna go into my C drive. Then I'm gonna go down to users and click on users. When I get into users, I'm gonna to go to public, the public folder. And then in the public folder, I wanna go into the public documents folder. Now in that public documents folder, I will find a file that says, a folder, should I say, that says Vetric Files. And I will go in and open that up. When we go into Vetric Files, you will have a series of subfolders and you will click on, for us, it's gadgets, that's what we're looking for. We'll click on the gadget folder and open that up. Now you want in your gadget folder, you want to find the appropriate software version. In this case, I'm working in Vetric VCarve 9. So I want to open that up. And then I'm going to simply right click and paste. Okay, that gadget there. Now I already had a uh, dovetail chamfer and spiral gadget and all that stuff in there. But, you know, it's there now. So once it's in that folder... I can now come into my Vetric software and I can click on gadgets, install, install new gadget, 
and then I can go in and click on the appropriate gadget that I want to work with. Um, I apologize about that little tone in the background. Uh, someone may not realize uh, that uh, there's class. Yes, is class tonight. So how do they do dovetails? Um, could you show that? All right, hopefully. Uh, I'm assuming a 207 number. Isn't that... Um, Oh, Poplasky, what is your first name? Oh my gosh, I forgot my customer's, my favorite customer's name. Not my favorite, you all are my favorite, but uh, um, Kim, Kim, are you in the class tonight? Uh, you just texted me. Uh, we are looking at it. All right, anyway, uh, so someone had asked if I could show how to do dovetails in the class tonight. Um, so there we go all right anyway we will click on that gadget and we will click open and of course it's going to give you a warning because gadgets some gadgets are made by Vetrix, some are not so it's saying gadgets are an entirely optional software and added in Vetrix software products they are provided as is without any express or implied warranty okay in no event will Vetric be held liable for damages arising from their use. You know, Vetric's got to cover their butt, you know, so you will have to agree to that and then it will successfully install that gadget into your gadget library up here. Okay. So once that's installed, then you're, you're set to go. Now, with uh, each gadget, if you, you know, refer to the gadget library, it gives you a uh, instruction on how to run this gadget or how to work with the gadget wizard. And um, it just came across, Kim. <laughs> Excuse me. So uh, um, that's why I was uh, asking that. It just came across. The, uh, so you'll look at the instructions and everything and uh, read them from here. Now, the uh, chamfer gadget, oops, the chamfer gadget, uh, when you open up the tool, it looks like uh, this window here. And really, you have to select the vector that you want to work with. And then you want to set the start depth, okay? So the start depth is most likely going to be zero. Uh, and I think, I think this gadget may cut backwards. We'll find out here in a moment. Um, it probably does. So, um, no, it starts, it starts at the top and then the cut depth is how deep you want that, um, in this case, chamfer to go. And then the angle that you want it to cut at. All right. Now, when you select your tool, you're going to select either a ball nose end mill or a flat end mill. Uh, either one of them in this case will work fine and then you'll give it a name and then you'll click OK. Uh, and then it'll create that, that effect. So let's go ahead and following these instructions, well, those aren't the instructions, following these instructions, which is what I just uh, went over with you, let's see how well this chamfer gadget works. Now this chamfer gadget uh, is cool for not only putting chamfers on your project and stuff like that, but you ever seen those uh, wooden soccer ball looking things where they have a bunch of polygons together uh, and they, they're, they're chamfered on um, you know uh, four or five sides and they all fit together to make a sphere in some way. You know you can use it uh, to that effect as well. And so I'm gonna start off with this here and with it selected I'm going to open up my chamfer tool. And now my chamfer tool, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start depth of zero. I'm gonna go a cut depth of a quarter of an inch. And for the angle, uh, it kind of already laid out the angle, uh, you know, based on you know my design, but I'm gonna go, um, I don't know how, I've never built one of those sphere boxes, so I don't know how what the degree of angle is all the way around. I think it's probably like a 30 degree angle. 
But uh, when I choose the um, bit, I'll use an eighth inch Bono, or not Bono, sorry. I'll use an eighth inch end mill, uh, quarter inch, you know, three sixteenths, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna use an eighth inch for this uh, because that's what I would use with my dovetail gadget as well. Uh, but I'll click OK there to add that in and then click OK. Now, once we do that, uh, it will create that chamfer toolpath as we can see there. And so if we went over to our 3D view and we previewed our toolpath, we can preview that toolpath. And we can see that it's really jagged and steppy, right? That's because we need to, when we set the tool, is we need to set the step over. The smaller and tighter the step over, the better the effect will be, okay? So we're gonna go into our tool here and we're gonna edit the tool and we're gonna change that step over from 24% down to about, uh, oh, I'm gonna go either, let's go with an 8% step over and I'm gonna click OK and click Apply. And then we will um, reset that preview and preview again. Let's see if I, uh, if it, okay. It won't let me make the change here on the tool. It won't let me, um, it lets me make the change here, but it doesn't update the tool path. So I'm going to, and that's, you know, it's, that's, that's what can I, what you can expect from an add on, uh, you know, uh, that's not made by Vetric. So we're going to delete this and we're going to go back into the gadget. We're going to go back into that chamfer gadget and we're going to set our tool. And this time we're going to come in and set that tool with our 8% step over. Now also, you know, um, a, uh, Ball nose may work better than an ML, but either one for this chamfer gadget, I believe either one works just fine. But I'm going to set that for um, a eight percent, and I'm also going to set the pass depth for a sixteenth of an inch. And um, the tighter the pass depth in this case, I think the pa the tighter the pass depth, the better it would be. So um, well, let's shoot with a. Uh, I'm gonna go a 30 second on the pass step just to see if that makes an effect as well. So I'm gonna click apply and click okay. I'll click okay and uh, yes, I can automatically see many more tool passes, uh, many more uh, clearance. So let's go in there and reset that preview and preview that selected tool path. And so our you know chamfers are much tighter. Now let me make sure that my preview is on the highest quality it is. Okay. So, um, it, uh, let's change this to a maple, make it a little lighter for you guys. There we go. So that way we can see the simulation window doesn't do a very good job at simulating, uh, you know, the, the previews with these, uh, gadgets and stuff like it would with a regular, uh, tool path, but we can get that, you know, um, look. So now this would be one of my many parts that I would be cutting out with these chamfers to glue together to make that sphere, that soccer ball. And if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, let's pop up a uh, window browser here and see if we can find one on Google. Uh, we're going to go a uh, wooden, I'm going to call it a soccer ball. Let's see if that even pulls anything up. <laughs> uh, I didn't even spell it right. Super ball. Window super ball. Wooden super ball. Um, let's try that again. What would they call that? Uh, wooden soccer ball. Wooden sphere. Wooden sphere. Anybody got any suggestions of what that would be called? Type it into the um, chat window. 
All right, so that's regular round spheres. That's not what we're going for. Um, we're going for the hexagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do they have? Do they have one? Yeah, here we go. All right, well now we're getting into the realm of possibilities. Uh, this isn't the greatest example in the world, but it gives you an idea. So let's take a look at this lamp, you know. Uh, so those five, you know, pieces are profile cut. They're chamfered and everything so they can glue it together. Um, and, uh, you know, so you can make some very cool, cool things. Uh, with your triangles, you know, and forget the hexagon, you can make triangles. Look at those lamps. Those are pretty awesome, right? Uh, so you can achieve those with the chamfer gadget. Uh, polysphere, Stefan Allen says. Polysphere, that might be a polysphere because it's a polygon. I bet you that's what it comes up as, but I like those lamps any, nevertheless. So, Stephen is like, he's like a wealth of knowledge over there, man. Poly sphere hmm I don't know you would think right but no uh, let's look at sculptures no all right those are cool sculptures okay but you guys get the idea we'll go back to the uh lamp here's you know here's an example but they could also be closed off they don't need to be hollow like this um you know they could have the actual sides and everything to them but this gives you that the, the idea uh segmented soccer ball jerry's <laughs> probably so but uh um so the chamfer tool with that type of you know that you know that would be one of the uses for it another use is just putting a nice chamfer on your project on your project board you know on your uh you might want a nice chamfer around the edge of your base of your uh led acrylic lights you know that base that you're cutting out you might want a nice chamfer around the edge of your sign uh, you can set that chamfer angle to whatever you want you could even use it to create mitered edges on your the end of your boards to uh, you know do like mitered frames and stuff. So um, just uh, something to uh, explore and play around with. Now the chamfer gadget again is very easy to use. Uh, rules of the game: you're going to select your shape, and this time I'm going to draw a triangle. Um, <clears throat> Watch how I draw a triangle. This is this is my easy way of doing this. All right, node editing, delete span, join, bam! Look at that. Join by bringing the two empty uh, endpoint vectors to the a common center point. See how fast that was. <laughs> All right. So um, <clears throat> let's get back into selection mode. And so once again, you want to select your vectors or vector, vector, vectors, whatever you're chamfering. Um, you want to come into the gadgets, chamfer gadget, set your start depth at zero, your cut depth to whatever depth you want to cut to. Uh, in this case, I'm going to cut to an eighth of an inch. I'm going to go with a 30 degree angle. And on your tool, make sure that you set your step over to be tight. The smaller the step over, the better the um, effect will be. And pass depth, uh, I'm going to see, I'm going to change this back to my normal pass depth for this bit. And uh, I'm going to see if that makes any effect. So we're going to click apply there with a 16th inch step over for my 8th inch end mill, uh, but a 2%, or I'm sorry, 16th inch pass depth, but a 2% step over. So we're going to click OK and we're going to see what comes of that. All right. So now looking good, Charlie Brown. So I'm going to reset that preview. 
and let's see yeah see a two percent step over maximum amount of lines means I'm gonna get the maximum amount of smoothness uh, preview the selected toolpath <clears throat> yeah yeah look how smooth that is how sharp those edges are um much much smoother so the past depth uh does not you know really play a role it's the it's the step over that's going to make all the difference in the world with your chamfer tool and everything yeah much much uh sharper looking uh step over with that two you know, um, two percent step over, much sharper looking cut. So, um, just remember that, and uh, you'll always have success with your chamfer gadget. All right, let's move on to our next gadget of the evening. Before we do, let's draw out some vectors. So I'm going to draw out um, two boxes toolboxes. I'm actually going to draw one box, throw that box into transform mode by double clicking on it, holding down the control key. I'm going to grab and drag another box over to the right. All right. Now with our dovetail gadget, we're going to do some dovetails on, uh, we'll do, um, uh, pins on one of these boards and tails on the other. But the key thing that we want to do here with our, you know, box edges is we want to segment all four sides. So we're going to go into the node editing and we're going to right click and hit cut vector or just put our mouse over the node and hit the letter C key on our keyboard. But we're going to cut all four of these nodes. We're going to do the same thing with this side and I'm just right clicking instead of uh, hitting the letter C key so you guys can see the full action there. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to select our uh, board here and uh, I'll just do pins on one side, tails on the other. So we'll start off and we're going to select our side here and we're going to go into our dovetail creator. And the first thing we want to do is we need to come into our dovetail pin creator. Okay, dovetail pin creator. And in this dovetail pin creator, we can choose whether it's pins or tails. Okay, pins or tails. So I'm going to start off with doing the pins first and for the side of this board here, I'm going to do three pins and a width of, I don't even know how wide my boxes are. So, um, let's measure how big my box is first. How big is my box? It's got a 3.2 inch height, 3.2 inch height. So, in that dovetail pin creator, we're going to go with, uh, if I'm going to do three pins, they're going to be uh, half inch wide. Now we'll go five eighths, six two five. Uh, the depth of cut is going to be already set based on the material thickness of my project board. So it's set it for... Um, you know, three quarters of an inch. And then of course we set the angle of the dovetail that you want, you know, you create the angle of the dovetail. And so I'm going to set this at a 30 degree angle and I'm going to click okay. And you'll see the area where it's created the, um, the, uh, path areas for the pins. Okay. Now over here, we're going to go into our creator. Bum, 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 bum. 
pen creator and this time I'll do the dovetails and we're gonna do uh, again if we've got three on that side we need three uh, the tails no I'm sorry the one two three four 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 we need four and uh, again the width of uh, 0.625 depth of three quarters inch angle of 30 oh the angle of the dovetail is going to overlap Consider the left dovetail. So I do need uh, three. I do need to match the amount. So let's go to our dovetails. Go three. They were going to overlap. Oh, wait a minute now. Uh, at this angle, your dovetails are going to overlap. Consider uh, less dovetails or smaller depth or smaller width or steeper angle. So there's a lot of different options to choose there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, back up all together. Get rid of those boys and girls right there all of my offsets oops not this one let me get rid of my duplicates i created a duplicate by accident all right one more time. It's not like you've never done this before, Laney. <laughs> All right. Let's move this back up uh, in place. I'm going to move it back here a little bit. All right. I need to cut that one back up on my nodes because I ended up undoing a little bit too far. All right. I'm going to go in and we're going to do two and two, two and two. Uh, it's a small box. I should have made this box bigger. I keep forgetting that I'm only working with three inches there. <laughs> no comments. All right. Dovetail pin creator. We're going to go pins. We're going to go two of them. Um, and we're going to click OK. There we go. And then on this side, we're going to go into our pin creator our dovetail pins we're gonna go with two and we're gonna click okay come on now what do you mean all right that's it we're deleting this we're making bigger boxes tired of playing with it All right, one more time, boys and girls, for tonight's lesson. Lord have mercy. How can you teach a class and mess up twice on the lesson? That's terrible. All right, I'm going through and cutting all of the corner nodes again, once again. Just wanted you guys to see that, you know, everybody makes mistakes. So... All right, so one more time, let's go in here and let's uh, create our um, <clears throat> pins. We'll start with the pins first. I'm going to go with two pins, five eighths inch each. Uh, let's go with a, maybe I don't want to go with a 30 degree angle. Um, let's go with a 12 degree angle. Click OK. And... Those are little dinky winky pins. So these are my big dovetails right here. So I got a dovetail that's gonna go there, there, and there. Right, right, right. Those are small. Okay. 
Oh, it'll be good enough for this example. All right, so now we need to go into the uh, dovetail creator, create pins. Uh, we're going to create our dovetails this time. And I need the same thing, and we're going to click OK. There's my dovetails to go into my pins. Now, the pins are a rectangle. Uh, they look like a rectangle, and you're like, well, how in the world is that dovetail going to fit into that rectangle? Well, uh, it will. Trust me. Um, but uh, the uh, because the this is just showing the uh, boundary of where that uh, angle chamfered cut is going to be that dovetail cut with that end mill and everything. Now I'm going to make my project board a little bit bigger in height so you can see that, and I'm going to center these up. And move this to the center uh, because I wanted you to see that when the pit, the tails were created, notice that it shoved the line back, and that's because it did not want to create any bigger. Uh, it did not want to make the project size any bigger. It didn't want to overextend the size, so it flushed up this line here with the end of the tools. So we need to trim off that excess. So we're going to come in here. And we're going to go into our interactive trim tool and we're going to trim off that excess. Okay, and so this would be our, our dovetails. Now, uh, once we uh, have that, we'll go into the gadget and go back into the dovetail creator. And we need to go into the uh, dovetail detect. And it says this gadget dis detects the selected geometry features uh, which might correspond to dovetail joints, right? It's going to select those rectangles and it's going to select those tails. Um, it's going to search for possible joints uh, for each potential joint made. It's going to add in a specific layer. So we're going to click. It's going to be called the marker layer. The depth of the dovetail is going to be three quarters of an inch thick uh, for our material thickness. And we're going to click OK. And it's going to say no dovetails found. Well, it would help if I selected our vectors. And then we did that. <laughs> no dovetails found. What do you mean? What do you mean, Javi Jr.? Oh. Oh. Never mind. Ignore what I just said. That is... Um, that is that tool. I'll we'll explain what that tool is later. That's a completely different thing. If you've got a project that you're creating yourself and you're drawing your own dovetails, your own pins and tails, your own shapes, you can go in there and it will detect those shapes that look like tails and pins, tails and pins, and it will create those. Uh, so you will not use this when you're using if you're actually making your dovetails in the gadget. And I'll show you the Kim. This is this uh, that tool will have to do with, um, uh, I'll show you when you, you asked about how do you make dovetails, um, I'll show you guys how to draw out your own dovetails at some point. Okay, so the thickness of our dovetails is three quarters of an inch thick. Uh, everything is carried over uh, from our, when we created the tails and pins, our angle is 12 degrees. Uh, our depth of cut again is going to match our dovetail thickness three quarters of an inch thick we're starting at zero and we're going to leave cut allowance alone uh, from there we're going to select our tool and you're going to choose either an end mill or a ball nose in this case i'm going to use a eighth inch end mill uh, i'm going to change my normal um step over um for this i'm going to leave it at two percent but uh, do I want to leave it at 2%? Well, let's find out. Let's go into our gadget library here and let's see if it gives us a recommendation saying that the tighter the step over, the better the effect. Just like it did with the chamfer. Let's see if it says the same thing here. Um...
so no, there's no special notes. Oh, let's oh, I might have might have wrong here. So let's see here. Um, let's see what it says about the tool. Select the tool. Specify your tool. Name of the tool path. Uh, this and that on the final note. Uh, you will rejoin. Okay, so it does not say anything specific like the tighter the step over, the better the effect and all like it did with the chamfer gadget. So we can just use our regular step over with that. And uh, which for me um, was, uh, I think it was 35%. I'll have to go back and look. And we'll click okay there. So with our tools, we're gonna go ahead and click okay. Now, um, you see the path that it's created. You know, it's going to be chamfering this, um, you know, creating that angle cut and everything for the uh, pins. The tails are just a profile cut. And let's go back and let's make sure that all of our vectors are closed. So we need to come in and close all of these for our. Uh, final profile cut so we'll go ahead and join that oops one more time we're gonna join that and then we're gonna grab this here and we're gonna join that okay I just rejoined to close off these vectors uh, for my profile cuts because I still got to cut my profiles and everything out. So now if we take a look at that toolpath in the toolpath preview, um, you'll see here where it's cutting that 12 degree angle. You can see that angle in the toolpath. And so if we preview that selected toolpath, um, you'll see those angle cuts. Now you're not going to see them very well until I do the profile cut on this. And so let's go ahead and uh, create that profile cut. All right, so we're gonna do, select this and this. Now, when I do the profile cut, I've got the round radius of my router bit that's gonna create this rounded edge here. It's not gonna give me a very sharp edge. So I need to go through and make sure that I you know, uh, create that little fillet in those corners. So that's the fillet tool. And the best fillet to use for this is a T-bone fillet um, uh, for the, the dovetail gadget. And we want, uh, with our eighth inch bit, we want a 16th inch. I'm gonna go a little bit more than uh, 0.625. I'm gonna go 0 0.063, just a little bit bigger. And we're gonna create our fillets okay and that'll give a place for our bits to escape so now we're going to select everything except for these two boxes here or these two lines should i say and we're going to create our profile toolpath our profile toolpath is a start depth of zero, cutting all the way through our material. And we're going to use an eighth inch end mill. If your eighth inch end mill isn't long enough, uh, you know, use your quarter inch, but make sure you set these tools appropriately. Use the quarter inch all the way through, throughout the whole cut. Um, I'm gonna click okay. And we're gonna do spiral ramps. So I'm gonna have my uh, feed rate and my plunge rate match one another. Okay, always on your spiral ramps. Uh, you want your feed rate and your plunge rate to match one another. And we ran into this today with someone, I can't remember who it was, but um, when you're changing that, if you are doing a profile cut and you are adding a spiral ramp, Make sure you're clicking the edit button of the tool 
to make that change. So it only changes this plunge rate and feed rate for this tool, for this tool path only. We don't want to change the defaults in our tool database. Okay. We don't want to change them there. We want to change just for that tool for that one time run. And so we're going to go ahead and click calculate on this. And now we can preview the that selected tool path. All right, so now we've got, it's hard to see, it's hard to see. Let me get it to focus somewhat. So we've got our dovetails uh, here with our 12 degree angle. Uh, we've got our um, pins and then we have our tails on this side. And you remember now, these are going in at an angle with one another. Uh, so uh, they go side to side 90 degrees from one another. So it's hard to simulate in, in here. Um, but the, uh, you can make a dovetail. Now the dovetail is going to have these little, uh, uh, fillets. If I zoom over here, we're going to have these little fillets, uh, in the edges of our dovetail. So you're going to see those when you look at a project. If we looked at a woodworking project that has, uh, CNC dovetails, so Let's take a look at uh, some of those. If we look, you can see those um, little fillets and things in, in those cuts. And the, um, you know, you might not like them. You might want a dovetail like when you put a dovetail in you don't want any gaps or anything in your joint of those little holes or places for the bait to escape that is a completely different way of doing dovetails on the cnc uh, and i will teach that method but that's a little bit too long to go into today because it also does require some modification to your cnc machine um you know in order because we have to carve off the edge of the table um, or the end, should I say, of the table uh, for that dovetails. And so we have to uh, create some spacing in our, uh, in our mounting plate and everything. And I'll go into that a little bit more in detail. Well, maybe we'll have one class on making dovetails uh, on your CNC traditional dovetails. I guess you would call it half blind, full, you know, uh, you know, dovetails, half blind dovetails, which is like this example here. Um, but right now working on the CNC, you're going to have uh, these little um, relief cuts here. Uh, and, you know, it's to be expected because the router bit has to have a place to escape. And so... Um, you know, you're going to have those little unsightly little joints. Not, they're not really unsightly. So, you know, it can add a decorative touch. Uh, you could, you know, I saw somebody take and uh, they took a, a small little piece of dowel and, um, you know, filled those in with little dowel pieces of a contrasting color to give a little accent. And uh, it um, will, you know, go through. Uh, let's see here. So Debbie Miller says the back of the cutout on the dovetail did not cut out flat. Is there a way to correct that? So let's take a look. Here. Right? The back side of my pen. Yes, there is a way to correct that because remember we have the radius of the cut. Uh, and now when you say flat, you're talking about 
no that's 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 supposed to be like that that is flat you have a flat back um and your two sides the router bit had to have a place to escape out uh debbie so if we look at uh let's go back and look at that image not this one that's not a dovetail but if we look at this image here uh let me see if i can blow this up Can I get it to blow up? But you see the relief cut uh, that's cut in the back, but you have that solid flat surface um, on the back side uh, right here. You see those little relief cuts. That are That is, if we go back into our drawing, that is, let's see if we can pop that up, these little indentions that you see here. Okay, now the way to correct that is to cut a traditional dovetail using a completely different method of dovetail bit. And this is doing it on the flat table on your CNC table. Um, this is uh, using a dovetail, not cutting on end like you normally would. Like if you had a dovetail jig, you know, and you're cutting on end uh, where that router bit, the router bit is coming this way. So we have the radius of that router bit uh, here but it creates that flat bottom surface in the middle, that flat bottom, so that our tail has that flat surface to reference against. But it does have to create those relief cuts in the back. Okay, so the dovetail gadget, you could, uh, you know, uh, have some fun with this. This board really should have went with, if I, especially with a 12 degree cut, I probably should have had uh, one, two, three, at least four dovetails on there, man, to make it look uh, decent. Um, but, you know, um, two will suffice for the example. Uh, so remember in this, uh, and let's, um, let's see if I can, I'm gonna delete that. I'm just going to delete it all and just redraw it. Now I'm going to shape this, uh, make sure that it's, um, you know, sized to fit. Notice I brought the mouse over to here. I'm waking, I'm putting my mouse over here to wake up this line. So that way when I drag, you see that dotted line come up across so it shows me where I'm scaling to. As I'm dragging this node here, I'm gonna bring my mouse over and wake this line up. So that way when I pull down to it, I will get that, you know, oops, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. I can, pull, I can get that dotted line so it shows me where I'm pulling down to to make sure that my you know, object's the same size. So we've got our rectangles here. We're gonna go into node editing and I'm gonna just cut the vectors. Um, since I'm only doing dovetails on one side, I'm just gonna cut the vector here and here. On this side, cut the vector here and here. And from there, I'm gonna select one dovetail creator we always do the pin creator first uh, when I say pin creator that's the tool then you choose whether you want to do tails or pins for you know that particular whatever you're you're selecting uh, and on this I will do uh, I'm gonna do four pins um, and I'm gonna go I'm gonna stick with 12 degrees because that's I think 12 degrees is a normal dovetail bit I'm gonna click OK and then I'm going to take and go back into the gadget dovetail creator, that pin creator. And we're going to go to do our tails on this side. Now, again, uh, when we create the uh, tails, uh, this is going to be full. There we go. All right. Now, now, notice here that my tails are backwards. They're facing inward. They should be outward. 
and notice that that spacing how it brought it back from here so to fix that to avoid that issue i'm going to remove those tails i'm going to make sure that on my um start point that my start point is uh facing the right direction so let me cut this here and here and i'm gonna select just this line here I'm gonna go into node editing and so my start point is coming from the top down and if I created that dovetail gadget you know that tail and everything and if my pins pop out like that then I need to reverse I need to reverse the uh, start and end point of my line so I'm gonna control Z to undo I'm going to delete those pins. I'm going to cut because I undid, so I'm gonna cut this one more time. And with this line selected in node editing mode, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna right click and make that the start point of my line down at the bottom. Now I'm going to come into my dovetail creator. Dovetails. Click OK. And we should have an appropriate pin. They should be pulling it back into the project board. From there, I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim those excess lines away. And then from there, I'm going to group or join all of my vectors so this one is joined up very good uh, this one I need to join with the rest of my pieces uh, for that profile cut and that way I have my profile cut as well okay so now um, for the profile toolpath or I'm sorry for the, let's do the tails first. Um, I'm gonna go into the tail section, dovetail creator, and we're gonna go into the dovetail toolpath creator. And it's gonna carry over my measurements from creating those tails and pins. So all I have to do is select my tool. And for my tool, again, I'm using an eighth inch end mill so I just click OK and it will create those cuts. Now it's only going to create the toolpath for the uh, pins, that chamfer toolpath, that special toolpath. The tails and everything will be cut out with the profile toolpath. So we'll create the profile toolpath. We're going to go three quarters of an inch through our material using that eighth inch end mill. Outside the line, we're going to be uh, using a spiral ramp clicking the edit button of our tool to make sure that that uh, tool is 50-50 uh, on, you know, our speed and, and plunge rate are the same. And we're gonna select our vectors here. Now, before I create that tool path, I almost forgot one crucial step. We gotta create those little offsets for that bit to escape. So, fillet tool. Uh, I'm going to go 0 0.063 T-bone fillet and we're going to drop those in on each of the pins. Okay, now I can create that profile toolpath and calculate. Reset our preview, preview the visible tool pass. And I want to show you uh, the um, that angle cut. So you got your angle cut of those tails and pins and you can do some dovetail work on your boards. And so we're, we're going to do this and we'll do this. Uh, two ways when we do our jewelry box dovetails we'll create a you know the using the toolpath creator here and then we'll also look at drawing our own vectors uh which get into uh 
a little bit more involved to create our own dovetails. Uh, and Kim, I know you, uh, hopefully that doesn't disappoint you, but it's just, it's a long, uh, it's, it's a little bit involved uh, with drawing the vectors for the dovetails. So we'll do that Wednesday night. Uh, we'll, that'll be our, that'll be our uh, class project, uh, traditional dovetails, we'll, how to draw the vectors to use to cut those dovetails um, and, uh, and everything. But if you're carving flat on the table, uh, your end mill comes in and it'll actually come in and just uh, do that ramp motion. Uh, a good sampling of this is if we go back into that dovetail gadget and I maximize this video right here and uh, mute this sound. So you might be able to see this um hopefully there won't be too much buffering but that that cut that toolpath cut that is happening is is just taking it's creating that angle chamfer uh whether it's a 30 degree angle 12 degree angle 7 degree 45 whatever it is it's just cutting the angle off of both sides of those uh pins and then you do your profile cut to, um, you know, cut the profile uh, uh, to cut them out. So that's what that toolpath creator does for you. It creates those um, those angled or chamfered cuts. And so I can see there's a little bit of buffering. I can see it actually in the preview. So um, that would be our dovetail creator all right so we've talked about chamfers we've talked about dovetails um we've uh i want to cover keyholes because i saw um young lady uh tonight was uh wanting to know the how to use the keyhole gadget couldn't quite figure it out and uh someone referred her to a stepcraft video Nothing against Stepcraft and all that, but uh, you know, um, I, I I just uh, I, it's my I, I taught this class uh, once the keyhole class um, a few month back, a month or two back, but maybe um, because that video isn't out there for you to refer back to, you had to refer to someone else. So I apologize for that. Uh, so where this video is going to be put up instantly. So now someone will be, people will have something to refer to. So let's talk about our keyhole gadget. Uh, first thing we need to do with the keyhole gadget is come in here and tell where we want the, uh, starting point of our keyhole to be. And the if we look at the gadget let me go back into the gadget library we go down to i don't even think key old gadgets in this library anymore it's not um let's go back to our vetric right here In order to open and use the keyhole gadget, we have to have a circle created. The circle is going to be based on the starting point or the diameter of our entry hole. So the question is, is do we want our keyhole to run up and down? Do we want our keyhole running left to right? Uh, where do we want it? So I'm going to come to the center of my board here and I'm going to come... Oh, right about here. And I'm going to draw in a circle that has an opening the same size as my keyhole bit. Um, it really doesn't matter what size the circle is, but I'm going to go with a diameter of 0.25. And I'm going to click apply and create that little hole there. Now, 
I'm just drawing this line for simulation purposes only. It, you do not draw a line. All you need is that starting circle right there, okay? But I'm drawing a line. I'm gonna snap to the center of my circle and I'm gonna snap a line up that is one inch in length. And let's imagine or pretend that this is going to be my keyhole slot, okay, that line. So the bit's going to enter into this circle. It's going to come and cut up and down, you know, up to the end of this one inch, and then it's going to come back, and then it's going to exit out of that hole. So all you need to do is draw your circle and place it where you want the keyhole to start. Now, I'm going to delete the line so it doesn't confuse you. Because that line, if I wanted my keyhole to go left to right, I can go left to right, up or down, down to top. So let's select our circle and let's open up the keyhole gadget. Now, over here, we're going to tell it where do we want our slot from that hole? Do we want it vertical from the bottom to the top? Do we want it vertical to where it cuts from the circle down? Do we want it horizontal, left to right, or right to left, you know, from that circle? Which way do we want our slot to go? In this case, in this example, if this was my picture frame or whatever that I'm hanging on the wall, I want my slot to be vertical from the bottom, which is the hole, up. Because I when it when that when that hook, when this slot slits over slides over that screw that's in the wall. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. We wanted to be able to catch. Now, the depth of my slot. Okay, let's look at a keyhole bit, and let's pull up a keyhole bit online. <clears throat> keyhole bit. Images, images, oops, ah, I didn't want to click on that image. Let's go into here. Give me a bigger picture, boys and girls. Okay, uh, I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me, where, let me find a picture that is gonna be big. They're all small. All right, hopefully this will help. Ah. Pick a bit, Laney, any bit. It doesn't matter. It's a keyhole bit. Okay. So, the diameter, the head of my cutter here, how thick is that cutter? And most cutters are about a uh they could be three sixteenths of an inch you know uh, a little over an eighth of an inch thick on the cutters on you know uh and some of them are thicker you know some of them are a quarter but we need to know how thick that is because we want that if you look at this little graphic to the right hand side we want that slot that depth of cut to cut so our head comes down leaving some meat above the head that, that's going to catch the screw. And so we want to, you know, our depth of cut, we need to know what that um, little uh, head on the end of our cutter is going to be. So in my case, I would say, you know, that I want a depth of a quarter of an inch. Okay. So the depth of the slot is a quarter of an inch. The length of the slot has to do from the center of that circle we drew up. And in this case, I illustrated a one inch line, so I'll use a one inch in length. The entry hole diameter, this is the diameter of that little head. If we go back to that image, what is the diameter of that head? And in this case, D1 or D, the letter D. Um, but, um, my the head is going to be three eighths of an inch uh, on the cutter that I have in my shop. 
so it's 0.375 in diameter. The slot diameter is you normally you have the the diameter of the the neck but if you want it to move over and kind of widen up or whatever you can you know set it to whatever you want to be but the slot uh, of my, the neck of my that little neck let's go back to that image the neck right here with the cutter on it what is the diameter of that um, that is going to be in my case of for the bit that I have is 0.1875 which is half of the about half of the head size um, the ones if you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy a keyhole bit typically it the diameter hole is about a quarter of an inch and then the slot diameter which is the diameter of your neck is about an eighth of an inch and you measure your neck and everything um, you will set the tool now you're using your keyhole tool, but you're not going to be able to program your keyhole bit into your tool database. So notice the software says set up a dummy end mill to control only the speeds and feeds of that cutter. So all I have to do is select one of my end mills that have the matching speed and feed that I want my keyhole bit to use. It doesn't care what the diameter is. It doesn't care what the step over is, none of that stuff. It's just looking at the speed and the feed. So if I uh, wanna set up a dummy bit and just call it keyhole and, and write my own speed and feed in here and, you know, and everything I can for my tool database, but I'm just gonna use one of my existing bits, my eighth inch end mill, and I'm going to select that uh, because it has a 50 speed and a 20 plunge, which is good for that. And I'm going to click OK. Once it does, it will draw out that keyhole slot. And that's what it's going to cut. Now, in the toolpath preview, you will not see the hole. Uh, you will not see the hole cut. You will only see the line. Okay. You're gonna just see the line because we used an eighth inch end mill as the dummy bit. So if I were to preview that toolpath, all we're gonna see is that eighth inch end mill slot. We're not gonna see the keyhole slot because, you know, it's not. it doesn't work that way. But you're gonna get a keyhole when you cut your bit, when you cut with your keyhole bit. But in your preview, you're only gonna see this slot right here. You're not gonna see like an actual keyhole slot. All right? Okay, so we've got that. Draw your circle, and let me uh, delete this uh, keyhole toolpath. All right, draw your circle. Doesn't matter where you draw it, just put it, you know, you want to position it where, where you want that keyhole to be. So I'm going to be on the center of my board. You know, I'm going to be on the center because I want this picture to not be tilty. And then where do you want, how long is that keyhole going to be? Is it going to be a half inch, one inch? How long is your keyhole going to be? So you need to figure out a proper placement uh, on your center line, you know, for that circle. Open up your keyhole gadget. Choose which way you want the slot to go. The diameter of your slot, or the depth of your slot, is uh, you know you want to you want to make sure you at least clear the head, and give yourself a little meat above that head. So in this case, a quarter of an inch. I want my slot to be you know one inch long. My diameter of my head of my bit is three seven point three seven five. My slot is one eight seven five wide, and I'm using an end mill eighth inch end mill as the dummy bit. And then it'll create that toolpath for you. Super, super simple. Now, someone said that uh, they liked the. I, I've never seen the Stepcraft video, uh, and all, and said it was an easy method and it works every time. That's wonderful. I don't. Uh, it doesn't use the toolpath. There's just, just something else they do. Uh, I've never. I have never watched the video. I've never seen it. I'll have to look at it. But if that method works for you and you like that method, uh, and you rather and you'd rather use it than the keyhole gadget and stuff. You can create your keyholes any way you want. Me personally, if I wanted to create a keyhole very quickly and easily, I bring and put my keyhole bit in. 
I come in and put it over the board where I want. I use my handheld control pendant. I plunge down uh, the router bit, turn the router on of course, uh, plunge down the bit and uh, you know with my Z slowly plunging down to the depth I want and then I use my Y positive button to push it up, my Y negative to come back and then bring it out. Um, now that free hand, you got to be good on that back part because if you don't come back just right you're going to blow out that hole. So I don't recommend free handing a keyhole. I'm just trying to illustrate that you can create your keyholes any way you'd like. I just wanted you guys to understand this keyhole gadget because it's very quick and easy. All you have to do is draw a circle. That's it. Draw a circle where you want that keyhole to be or to start should I say. All right, let's uh, go ahead and um, you guys uh, listen to me long enough. Um, let's go ahead and see if we've got any commenters. Let's look at our Facebook page. And um, nobody on Facebook. Oh wait, let me refresh, I haven't refreshed. Let me refresh. Okay, still good there. All right, over here on the chat, live chat, let's uh, let's talk a little bit um, and let's switch out of um, Patrick for a moment. We're gonna switch one over to me. My little smiling face there. All right, let's talk now. For those of you who got your DWC quick sets, uh, I'm going to be releasing a PDF instruction in the Facebook group on how to connect your um, quick set tool, DWC quick set, and I'm uh, also how to set it up in your CNC USB controller. But I'm also going to make a little video, a little video uh, showing you how to set up and use your quick set tool your DWC quick set tool um, and uh, if you got your DWC quick set tool and you did not get your little pin with it your little alignment pin be sure to let me know because I know a couple of them did go out without the pins uh, so be sure to um, be sure to let me know which uh, which one of you did not receive the little uh, alignment pins with it. Um, and also, Peter Hearn, if you're in the group, which you are, Peter just asked a question. Uh, Peter, uh, after class tonight, um, could you give me a quick call um, regarding your order? Thank you. Okay, not right now though. All right, so let's see what uh, let's see what Peter's question is. Question on dado cuts. I was using a quarter inch end mill to do a half inch dado. The bit is not a quarter. A quarter inch end mill makes a seventeen inch dado. Help. Okay. All right, so let's draw in a dado. Let's draw in a dado. Uh, dado goes against the grain, groove goes with the grain. So we'll draw a dado. All right, so I want my dado to be, um, I was using a quarter inch end mill to do a half inch dado. So we want a half inch, uh, 0.5 wide dado. And I want to stretch that out so it passes my board a little bit so I don't get those round radiuses on the end of my dado. All right. And uh, you're going to use a pocket cut, I'm assuming is what you did uh, there, um, Peter. So we're going to go, how deep is your dado? Let's see here. Um, 7 sixteenths. Uh... Oh. 
Yes, I can, Miss Debbie. I sure can. I was sitting there drawing it out. I thought you guys were seeing it. That's so funny. Um, let's uh, switch back to our... screen there. All right. Sorry about that, boys and girls. Okay, quarter inch depth. All right, so our cut depth is, start depth is zero, cut depth is 0.25 using a quarter inch end mill. Okay. And we are doing a, uh, did you do an offset or a raster cut, uh, Peter? Do you know? Doesn't matter which one you do, but, uh, you know, uh, typically if I'm doing a dado for joinery, I'm going to use a raster and I'm going to raster with the dado, with the dado. So my raster angle is going to be 90 degrees. I want to raster 90 degrees, which means along my Y axis, because that's the way my dado is running. So 90 degrees. Um, and we're going to click calculate. Okay. So if we look at our tool path, And we preview that selected toolpath. Okay. Uh, we should end up, if I look, uh, if we go down and look at the bottom of, uh, let me get into a position to where we can see this. Bear with me a second. Okay, so you're saying that when you cut uh, your dado, um, uh, Peter, that one, you got a quarter inch depth of cut, but your quarter, uh, your half inch dado ended up being a sixteenth of an inch shy. It did not cut a quarter of an inch wide. So if we look at um, my... X position of 1.899 to my X position of you know 2.399 um, from left to right that was seven sixteenths for you not one half of an inch is that correct yeah I know on paper <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm asking you that. Uh, yeah, I know it's on paper. It's uh, you know, uh, it's it's showing a half inch here, but uh, in reality, it was seven sixteenths. So we need to figure out where you lost a thirty second inch on each side of the cut. Um, and because a thirty second and a thirty second equals a sixteenth of an inch, and that's what you're missing is a sixteenth of an inch. You're shy a sixteenth of, of, um, you know, a half inch there on a seven sixteenths cut. We're gonna have to look at uh, and, and see. Um, one, we need to check the calibration on your uh, machine if we haven't done so, or if you haven't done so, we need to check the calibration and make sure that when you know uh, we're stepping over that we're stepping over the um the appropriate amount the steps per unit uh when we tell that machine to move a quarter that it's actually moving a quarter um and uh, we need to adjust the calibration two we need to look at the diameter of the bit um you know to make sure you know i, I can't see a quarter of an inch end mill being um a 30 seconds inch smaller than it should be but we're losing a 30 second of an inch on each side um so we need to find out where that is uh is it in the calibration the steps per unit on the machine or is it in the bit or is it a combination of both 
uh, but we need to we need to uh, look at that in the CNC USB controller software. So if you would like, um, you can give me a call in the morning because I'm going to be heading to Georgia tomorrow afternoon. So in the morning, if you'd like to call me, uh, we can do a calibration test on your CNC machine and run the axes and calibrate them and make sure that we're we're telling it to move one way. Uh, and and as Steven said, is a half inch end mill not a choice? No, he's got a mini. If I'm not mistaken, Peter Steven has a mini carver, uh, and uh, it doesn't. It, you can use a half inch end mill with a quarter inch shank. Um, he can go to Home Depot or Lowe's and pick up one of those, uh, so it'll fit in his router. Uh, that's not a problem. But uh, half inch end mill with a half inch shank, he can't use. Um, but if he was using a half inch end mill, then all he'd have to do is draw a line and do a profile cut on the line and end up with a half inch dado. Uh, you know, that's an option too, but I'm not sure why he's not. Um... Okay, that's great. 9 a.m. works fine. Uh, I'm not sure. Is there a reason why you're not using a, a, a half inch end mill, uh, Peter, just in drawing a line? You know. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter. We still need to check the calibration machine if you're, you know, if you're supposed to be cutting out a quarter inch pocket and you're getting a 7 16 inch pocket, uh, then we need to figure out where those steps are. So give me a call at 9 o'clock in the morning and we'll, uh, we'll go through that. All right, that was a good question, but yes, we'll, we'll cover that. Um, and, uh, but we'll cover that definitely tomorrow. Uh, have a tape measure with you, Peter. Uh, uh, some type, some form of ruler uh, with, with uh, you know, it would be great if you had a ruler that had, uh, you know, 16 or, 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 you know, uh, 30 seconds on it. But, you know, a regular tape measure, have, just have some kind of measuring device with you because we've got to calibrate the machine and we've got to tell it how, when we tell it to move one inch or 10 inches, we've got to program in how many, how far it actually did move so we can adjust those steps. Per unit all right so that was a good question any other question any other question that one's uh, that one's gonna be a we gotta um, we gotta determine where that is because as long as your pocket cut also make sure that you have no pocket allowance in here uh, Peter no negative pocket allowance or positive pocket allowance, it should be zero. Um, make sure that there's nothing in that toolpath, no pocket allowance accidentally programmed in. Ruler or caliper, either one, both, you know, we're gonna be moving 10 inches and I don't think your calipers will stretch that far, so. Um, okay. <clears throat> Wayne, is there a place to go and read how to download a gadget to the Vetric program? Wayne, did you come in late? Because I went through those step by step. So you'll actually be able to watch that in the video. Uh, we actually downloaded a gadget from the gadget library. So we can do it real quick one more time because it only takes a second. So Vetric gadgets, go into the gadget library. Click on Read More and Download. Come down to the bottom and click Download Gadget. The gadget will download most likely to your Downloads folder. So if you're using Google Chrome, you can right click on this little arrow or left click on this little arrow and say Show in Folder. And it will actually open you up to the folder where that file is and it will actually highlight that file so we did the spiral gadget and if we come down did i download the spiral gadget which gadget did i just download gear making gadget <laughs> that's why you can't find it under S because it's under G. Um, so our 
gear making gadget is hiding from me. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. G, right here. See how it's highlighted all nice and pretty for me and I can't even see it with my glasses on? <laughs> all right. So once you go, now this is in my downloads folder. So I need to move this from my downloads folder to the C drive and vector files folder on my computer. So we're gonna go right click on this gadget. Uh oh, I right clicked on my Windows 10. Bear with me a second, it's gonna crash. Stand by while it crashes, there we go. Let it rebuild itself. Everybody, anybody else have that issue with their Windows 10 uh, uh, right click get, uh, crash? That might just be me because my um, uh, my hard drive is completely full. Let's go back into my downloads. Go back down to my gear making gadget. Okay. We're gonna right click, hopefully the menu will open this time. Wonderful, we're gonna cut it from here, cut. We're gonna go over to our, this PC on the left hand side. We're gonna click on this PC. C drive, our Windows C drive, OS C drive, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna go into program file, no, I'm sorry, I'm thinking, pff, Never mind. We're gonna go into users, users. We're gonna go into public. And then we're gonna go into public documents. And we're gonna find the folder that says Vetric Files. In that Vetric Files, we're gonna find the folder that says Gadgets. We're gonna open that up. And then we're gonna find the appropriate program that we're using, and in this case, I'm using VCarve Pro 9, V9. And then I'm going to right click and paste that gadget in that folder. Now I can go into my Vetric software and click on gadgets up here at the top and then click on install new gadget. And when I do that, I can now click on my gear maker gadget and click open. It's gonna give me warnings saying, hey, you know, uh, Vetric's not responsible for anything going wrong with the use of this gadget. You have to agree to that. And then it will tell you that that gadget is successfully installed and it's available for use. And so then you will see the gear making gadget in your list down below. So that is how to download and install the gadgets from the gadget library. Okay. All right, so let's, um, Steven, any idea when the rollout of the full version of TNG? Uh, actually, uh, Steven, it's kind of now. Uh, we've got the um, PDF uh, manual and um, uh, I'm, starting to switch people over. All of the new boards from this point on, uh, from all the machines that we're selling literally from uh, this week on, all have, uh, they're all gonna be using TNG instead of uh, CNC USB controller. But they can be, those boards can be reverted back to the CNC USB controller if someone prefers to go back to it. Um, so, uh, the, the uh, but it's still under beta. Uh, um, Planet CNC will not release it to a full version until it's done, but but we're you know we're at the point where we're ready to kind of move people forward into it. Uh, I'm gonna have to create some classes for you guys and girls because the last thing I want is you switching to TNG and calling me because you don't know how to use TNG. So I'm gonna put out the PDF manual first. And that's gonna be a reference manual for you guys to read because TNG is like CNC USB controller, but it has more controls and things. And I wanna be able to teach little classes on it or make videos on how to use this, how to do that, how to do this. 
because uh, otherwise I'm going to get a million TNG phone calls that I don't want. Um, you know, I'll help you any way whatsoever with TNG. I mean, that's what, that's what I'm here for, to help you with any of our software. But I don't want a million people calling uh, for basic, simple stuff just because TNG is new and they don't know how to use it. And it's, uh, you know, they're stopping production because they got to learn the new, a new controller software. So I'm going to release the um, PDF uh, into the uh, Facebook group file section for download. Uh, you guys can download it, read it, review it, uh, and then uh, whenever you're ready, uh, you can start the process. But understand this, right now, uh, to switch over to TNG, you will be down for at least 24 hours. Uh, your production will be down while you're waiting for vet, uh, Planet CNC to send you your new license code. Uh, once you make the switch, you will be down, not able to run your machine for 24 hours, uh, up to 24 hours. Um, if it's a weekend, could be longer. But um, so uh, we got to figure out, Stephen, exactly how we want to tell people they can, you know, how we want to approach uh, getting people to uh, start moving over to that. Uh, they just have to know that they're going to be down for 24 hours, uh, you know, while they're getting the license. And they got to write the letter to, and I'm going to create a little template letter uh, that you can fill in the blanks. Um, so you can send it off to, uh, planet CNC for your license code email. Uh, so there's a few little details that need to work out. Yeah. Dennis, uh, uh, Dennis, your question is how am I doing? How have I been? I've been wonderful. Uh, the shows are wonderful. Traveling jet lag, uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> No, seriously, we're doing well. I'm happy. I'm good. Everything's good. Uh, we've um, uh, had a wonderful show in Baltimore. Not so good in Massachusetts. Uh, but we did get to see some uh, some of our customers from Mass uh, came out and visited. Thank you for coming out and visiting. Uh, but that show wasn't really that great because of the weather and stuff. It was just weird uh, weather and all. And... Um, you know, but other than that, they, life is going well, man. I'm happy. I'm breathing. Uh, I got a family that loves me, and I uh, can't complain. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, where are the files posted from previous YouTube classes? Where are they posted? Because they're not on YouTube. <laughs> um, um, yes, Debbie, uh, to judge. Uh, Tad, I'm coming back to your question. Uh, Debbie, yes, uh, we're going to switch everybody over to TNG. It's going to smooth out your machine. And you guys can talk with uh, Dennis and Steven. They've been using TNG for a, a little while now. They're still getting to know it, you know. But um, you can ask them what they think of, uh, you know, has it, has it, have they seen any significant changes as far as the smoothness and things like that? And, um, uh, you know, uh, I, Debbie, I, I believe Debbie does have the MK34 board, uh, Stephen. Um, maybe uh, we'll have to look, but that's another thing. In order to switch over to TNG, you have to have the MK3 controller board in your control box uh, and your control pendant and everything. But let's go back to uh, Tad's uh, question. So, Tad, you know where the oldies but goodies are on digitalwoodcarver.com. Um, digitalwoodcarver.com under training it's my dog breathing heavy uh, come all the way down and we've got those three you know videos I never really went any further with this I got to populate it some more because now we have the uh, channel and Facebook but our past videos have uh, just been they're all here, there's not a direct um, link for it uh, because I'm in the process of downloading them to re-upload them to Facebook. Uh, these videos are, um, so if I were to uh, I 
under the recordings. Let me move this over. I'm sitting here. All right. So on WebEx, where we had all of the classes, all the recordings are here uh, from those past classes. Uh, they are, um, if there's a particular class, go to the calendar on the training page of Digital Woodcarver, digitalwoodcarver.com. Go to the training page, and there's those three videos and project files and everything. But go to the calendar and go back to uh, last year, September, October, August. And here's a lot of the classes, August, September, October, November. Um, and find the name of the class. Write it down. Email it to me and I will send you the link because right now I'm in the process of downloading every one of these two hour, three hour, two hour videos and then having to re upload them to the Spindle TV channel. Uh, so if you're looking for a particular one right now, right away, let me know what the name of it is and I can send you the link to the video. Uh, but once I get all of these videos downloaded, this account will be destroyed and deleted. So those videos will no longer be able to be accessed until they're up on the Spindle TV channel. So if you're looking to review something uh, today, tomorrow, what have you, uh, let me know what video it is and I will send you the link. Okay? And I'll send you the link. And uh, they will be, um, they will be uh, uploaded soon. But I mean, they're just they're hours and hours of footage that have got to be uploaded to the new Spindle TV channel. And I'm working on it. But between I fly in Monday, you know, I got in like every Monday, 3:30 in the morning. I get back to Ocala. Uh, from there, I'm catching up on phone calls and texts from everybody that uh, you know was trying to get a hold of me over the weekend that couldn't. And then tomorrow I'm delivering a CNC that I sold today uh, in Georgia. And then Wednesday I've got, you know, to get back and get to class. And then I fly out Wednesday night at one o'clock in the morning. So there's not a whole lot of time to, uh, to, to get the video. So be patient with me. And, but they will be up on there. Um, uh, they'll be up on there. And right now, Tad, uh, the um, the class videos are all you're going to get as far as the links, as far as the files and all. They will be available. The links will be in the descriptions of the videos. Uh, those files will be in the description of the videos when they're on the YouTube channel. Uh, in the meantime, some of those files have been posted over in the Facebook group under the file section. But uh, right now they're not. Um, yeah, I was just waiting for you to ask that question, Baron. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, okay, so a uh, question that, uh, that, that came, that's, that's come up is um, talking about static electricity uh, with their vacuum system. They might be using or running a large vacuum system, and they have some static uh, build up and need to discharge it. What needs to be done is we need to create a place for that static to discharge from. And so uh, we want to come in to uh, our copper wire and we want to run a copper wire around our hose uh, giving that static electricity a place to go to and we want to run that uh, copper wire around our dust collection, depending on what you're, if it's just a dust hose coming from your vacuum or if it's actually your shop, you know, your shop system where we've got to create a, you know, a copper wire feed that's going to be flowing all the way back to a power outlet, not to the control box, not to the table frame of the CNC, because we have electronics in that control box and everything and we don't want to fry that. It needs to go to ground. So you either need to run a ground rod outside of your shop and run directly to earth ground. 
or you need to run to a ground uh, terminal of a power wall outlet. Okay, you can use the ground terminal of a power wall outlet, but you need to, uh, you have to create a way for that uh, charge, that static electricity to discharge. And this video that I'm that that I've got playing in the background is as I'm um, talking to you guys and girls about. Uh, this is a good little step-by-step -step video of this guy, or he's just showing you how he's, you know, ran his wires and everything on his dust collection system. And uh, it's called Dust Collector Grounding the System. Grounding the System. Uh, and it just gives you, you know, a little bit of an idea. But you, you know, on your vacuum hose, on your vacuum pipe, whatever your vacuum system, you know, is... You need to have a copper wire running through, uh, coming in, uh, you know, uh, to um, your hose, and then that wire needs to run to earth ground, either an outlet that is grounded if you're wiring, and I'm not an electrician, uh, so I'm not going to give any electrical advice. Uh, if you want an electrician to come do it for you, hire an electrician. But, uh, you know, be careful. You're working with electrical if you're going to be tying into one of your existing electrical outlets. Uh, and if your outlets are wired properly, then they are going back to your panel. And then your panel is going back to earth ground. So, um, you need to give a place for that static to discharge. Okay. And uh, that's about all I can offer advice on that. And that's what you need to do. You got to create a, a path for it to go to earth ground. Okay. All right. So dust collector grounding the system. Uh, this is uh, down to earth woodworks. Uh, great guy. Uh, and, um, you know, he's, uh, um, you know, pretty straightforward. All right, there's lots of videos on YouTube, but this is the one that, that you know, he really kind of goes into detail of what wire he's using, the little terminals, how he's connecting it, blah, blah, blah. You know, you don't have to be extravagant with it, but you know, still you need a place for that, that ground to go, that, that static electricity to go. All right, uh, let's go back to... Uh, let's see here. Um, guess the cat's out of the bag. Uh, yes. Yes. Um. <laughs> all right. Uh, I was trying to get all that info about TNG. Yes, Baron. Uh, TNG uh, will be switching people to. Uh, Wayne, I'm not sure why you lost audio. Um. Hopefully you guys heard every word that I just said. Uh, let's see here. I highly suggest a grounding rod outside the shop with a copper wire uh, to all my tools running on the dust collection system. Yes, Dennis. That's exactly the proper way to do it. It should run to earth ground. The proper way is to run to earth ground. Now, if you're, I'm not an electrician, but if your panel box is grounded properly to earth ground, your actual panel box, uh, and your outlets are all running to that panel box, um, you, uh, you, you can run to an outlet ground, a you know your wall outlet ground, and that will you know send it through that 110, you know all the way uh, to earth ground. But it's it's actually better to run to a grounding rod. You can buy grounding rods at Lowe's. Uh, they're eight foot. Pound them suckers into the ground. Get a grounding lug that the copper wire attaches to, and bring it into your shop system. Uh, and uh, because static electricity is a real thing, uh, the vacuums, the bigger vacuums, they pull a lot of CFMs and they pull a lot of stuff through. They're building up static. If you ever seen dust, sawdust standing on end on the outside of your hose, then you have a static buildup and there's no place for that static to discharge. And, you know, I've never seen it happen. I've never, you know, I've, I've, I've heard rumors of it happening. 
but uh, you know that static discharge can cause issues with uh, interference um, with the machine. You know the the signals that the machine's sending out. Um, it can cause, uh, you know, uh, it can cause sparking, you know, I've never seen that, but you know, I've heard rumors of that, uh, and it could potentially cause a fire. Never seen that again. Again, I've never seen any of these, uh, you know, in real life happen, but, uh, you know, uh, evidently they do, or they're, you know, it wouldn't be a thing. Um, but I, you know, anything's possible. That statics, you know, building up static electricity could could interrupt the signal of the CNC, you know, the USB 5. I don't know. I, I've never seen that happen. I've never really uh, run into that. But, you know, some people have uh, said that it could. So uh, you want it grounded. You want it, you want it to uh, earth ground. That's like the laser machines. You know, you want to run a grounding rod. If you have one of our laser machines, they recommend you run a grounding rod outside your shop and you direct, you ground direct to that grounding rod. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, I used an eight foot replacement extension cord, separated then secured the hot black and white wire neutral and then attach the ground lead to the vacuum hose DFC is spot on um, you are um, you can use uh, copper water lines uh, as in uh, as with uh, because they are grounded um, but it's not preferred choice. Okay, so Stephen Allen says you can you can run a ground to your car if you have a attic and you're in a basement or something. You got exposed copper water line, you know you can run the ground to that. But it's not the preferred choice. It definitely is not. But you know, um, let's see here. Uh, I do it because it reduces the static sawdust buildup on all my pipes. Yes, have you ever seen static buildup on your pipes and everything? That dust, you know, it draws it in. Um, you want to take a test, especially if you have PVC piping for your dust collection system. Uh, take a small piece of PVC and take a microfiber cloth. Uh, rub that cloth on that piece of PVC and then take some shredded little paper and hold that piece of PVC over that shredded little paper and watch how it picks it up, the static from it. You know, so we just got to give a place for it to discharge. Um, uh, just Google search uh, grain dust dryer explosions <laughs> grain dust dryer explosion there you go google search uh yeah steven's giving you a recommendation of google searching so uh earth ground uh which we recommend please do not ground uh do not run a copper wire to the frame of the machine or to the control box uh of the machine because you have electronics and components and stuff inside that box we do not want any uh we don't want to be grounded off to the wrong thing or any discharge going off in that box and frying your relays or your board or your components because we will not, uh, you know, that you do not want to have to pay for those replacement parts. <laughs> so, um, earth ground. All right. So, um, that answer your questions on that. Uh, not sure what you're talking about with the pendant. With the pendant. What I say about the pendant. Did I say something about the pendant? Baron, yes, there will be future classes on the laser after um, uh, next week. Uh, I've got a program that I'm still trying to uh, get set up properly uh, that I want to be able to recommend to uh, you guys and girls uh, that would be pretty, that give you a little bit of cool flexibility with the laser, but I haven't had a chance to test run it and see how it does um, and stuff. Uh, but yes, there will be laser classes coming up here in the very near future. Uh, there's going to be a class on... Um, there's going to be a class on uh, the uh, quick set tool, or not a class, a video. We're going to be out on the you know, setting up your quick set tool and installing it and using it just like I did with the laser. And um, oh, uh, 
MK34 board. Uh, Debbie, you would have to um, go to your CNC controller software and um, go to the help. So if we come over, you got to be plugged into your uh, CNC at the time. But if we open up the CNC USB controller program, go up to help, activate license, and look at uh, your serial number, and it should say, you know, uh, something something serial number MK34. Um, if it says 24, then, uh, you know, you would need to change your board up to a 34. Um, but under the CNC USB controller program, help. You can come to um, activate license and right here where it says serial number, it'll say the serial number with MK34 uh, and it'll let you know. The other way is to visibly look at it. You can open up your box and look at your board and it'll say USB CNC controller. Either It'll either say MK34 or MK24 on the board, printed on the board in big white letters. Uh, but the easiest way is to look at the software uh, while you're connected to the machine and go to uh, activate license and it should say your license number with your serial number with uh, MK34. Uh, the TNG is free uh, to change over. TNG is free. There's no charge to change over to TNG. But there is a charge if you have to buy the board. Uh, so if you have to buy the MK34 board. And so if we come over here and um, bear with me a second. Let me pull this up. If we go over here to shop on our website, uh, you'll notice the website's changing a little bit. We have a young lady named Amy Dribble that's uh, doing very, very good. Uh, she's cleaning some things up. Uh, but you're going to come down here to replacement parts. Replacement parts. And... Did I put the MK34 board on here? No, I didn't. Hold on, let me see if I... Where did I put it at? All right, stand by. I didn't uh, put the MK34 board on here. You just order it right from the website. But let me tell you what the price is going to be. Stand by while I pull up my prize list. Um, that's under downloads. Stand by. Price list. Is that the one? Yeah, that's it. The MK34 board is um, $285. $285. Okay. Uh, did I lose audio? $285 is the MK34 boards uh, in that They'll be up on the website tonight. I forgot to put them on the other day when I put all the other replacement parts out. Oh, speaking of, uh, that's a new little announcement for you guys and girls. You all might have already noticed that already. Um, but uh, let me um, let me show you here. On our website, digitalwoodcarver.com. Uh, the MK34 board, uh, no, Debbie, it's not too, too difficult to install. Uh, it's just a matter of plugging in all the wires, uh, the same wires 
just uh, take a picture of your old board and then plug in the new one. Uh, there's a couple of, they, you know, they change position and stuff, but uh, I would be able to walk you through it. Um, and, uh, but under shop, we have a new category called replacement parts. Replacement parts. Uh, and in here you will find replacement parts such as router brushes, uh, flex couplers, solid state relays, clamps, collets, fans, controller pendants, touch gauges, e-stops, uh, connector pins, bearings, um, you know, laser skirts, wrenches for your router, uh, relays, start buttons, stop buttons. You know, uh, all the replacement parts, um, majority, most all of them uh, on here. And then the controller board will be there as well. And then also we have a category called apparel. And right now there's only a hat on there, but I have two new pullovers um, that are going up. If anybody wants, uh, you know, some winter apparel, um digital wood carver apparel uh i've got uh two windbreakers and let me see if i can um let's see if i can embarrass uh derek uh our model by showing him on youtube <laughs> oh, Derek. but um the uh let me get that to uh minimize uh not the best picture hold on a second let me go to the next one let me go to the next one lord of mercy that's another side view we don't want that he's showing the zipper it's got zippers on the side so it's kind of a windbreaker uh type uh, you know, pockets and everything. There you go. There's that smile. That that's uh, <laughs> but uh, that's a very comfy jacket. Uh, a pullover. It's a pullover. It's got zippers on the side, so you can uh, zip it uh down. You know, and you can get it over yourself uh quite quickly and easily. But uh, that'll be posted up. It's a really nice uh windbreaker. I got one, and uh, it's one of my favorites to wear. And also, it's kind of got the material. It's almost like it's rainproof. Well, water rolls off it pretty good. Um, any replacement kit for new kids? No, no. Fourth axis training soon. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, we can do fourth axis training. Uh, I, 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 I can. We'll definitely see. Got to get those videos up there. Um, but yes, we can do a fourth axis training. Um, the, the only part of the training, the, the software creating the, uh, Tad, um, what, what part of the training you want to need, need, you want the, the, uh, drawing the design and wrapping it, creating a wrap job set up in the Vetric or the actual, how do I turn my router 90 degrees? Where do I touch off my X, Y, you know, zero out my X and Y and touch off my Z on the machine? Uh, what is the A-axis up and down? How do I set that kind of training? Um, or all the above. <laughs> Both. <laughs> all right. Um, and. Uh, oh, it's no, 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 no. Don't don't get me wrong now. No, those were bought. That jacket, that pullover was bought by Indiana folk. Uh, in Indiana for use in Indiana, uh, where it's negative 12 degrees right now, or where it was the other day. Um, that, uh, that thing is warm. Don't let that fool you. It's freaking warm. Uh, it's time. I had to pull it off. I had to pull it off in Massachusetts. I was in Massachusetts this weekend and, uh, it's just a little too hot for me with it on standing outside. Mind you. Uh, it's yeah don't let it see me it was bought for it was bought from up north for up north uh it's too hot for me down here in florida i i get to wear it during the winter time now when it's really really cold but so don't let that don't derek's just a six foot seven six foot 
six big tall guy uh nicest guy ever but man he towers me he's huge he's big uh so it, it might look thin or small on him but it's warm um i'll have to uh i'll have to sport mine on wednesday you guys can see it on wednesday uh let's see here um toe all right dad well we need to get some uh we need to get a little video to uh, gather. So here, Tad, uh, here's what I'm going to recommend to you: is um, go into uh, digitalwoodcarver.com. Okay, <coughs> it got 26 degrees down here. It's cold. Hey, uh, go into digitalwoodcarver.com. Go into videos right here. Videos. Okay. Under the assembly and setup videos up here at the top, click on this little arrow uh, at the top of the third video and scroll over to the right. And then go to this video on how to set up and use the Digital Woodcarver fourth axis wrapping a cylinder. This video walks you through step by step on turning and tilting the video or the, the router how to turn it 90 degrees how to create your files in vetric how to zero out your x-axis what your y-axis is what your a-axis is how to zero out your x and y and everything now in this video i had to round over i had to round over one end of my spindle because I have if I had a four jaw chuck. You don't have to do that if you've got the spur drive in the live center. You just throw your square block on there, but I had to prepare my block first. This video talks to you about router bit choices for roughing your bit your blank from square to round. Uh, and then this video talks about setting up your steps per unit so that you make a full 360 degree turn based on the diameter of your spindle. Every single step on creating the project in Vetric to the spreadsheet to setting it up and then running that job, you know, actually running it, this video will walk you through step by step and hopefully that will tide you over until we have a class because you should be able to make a project based on this video. And it's, it's also got closed captioning, too. Okay? So it's closed captioning. Word for word. Everything I'm saying in there is spelled out. So hopefully that will hold. And there's a lot of buffering going on, so i got to stop. All right. So sorry about the buffering. That was on me. I saw that buffer happen. Okay. and let's see here but yeah check it out uh it's on the videos page top row the assembly videos at the very end it's a step by step um and the only thing difference is is i think tad you don't have the four jaw chuck you have the spur drive in the life center uh so you don't need to round over your end of the stock um but i will have a class up on that uh we will come up with a class on that and uh i think we're gonna make a we'll, we'll do something really nice we'll make a table leg or a statue or something I'll make a statue. It'll require a spire, but it will make a statue or something. Well, it won't require. It'll require me to have a spire to make it, and then I can send you guys the STL file. But, um, but it'll get you. It'll get you going. All right. So, um, the South is cold. Peter says the South is cold. It is, but it will rise again. <laughs> All right. Um, no, Steven, I'm not making the helicopter. Sorry, buddy. I just can't do it, man. That's beyond that 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 one was above my head. I don't want to even think about the helicopter right now. You still got to think about the helicopter cuz you still got to get that thing knocked out. Um, all right, guys, it's 9:29. I've got to get off here cuz I have to place an order and I got to call Burl before he closes. So, um the um 
check your Facebook uh, emails uh, if you were one of the ones that, that were on the list and you requested the invoice from me and I sent you the invoice and there's six of you that I got to find out who you are. I don't know who you are right at this moment. Uh, uh, if you want your, we're ready to ship them out to you. Um, we just need your invoices paid. Uh, if you do, um, if you want a, uh, quick set tool, um, down the road, uh, guys and girls, it's on the digitalwoodcarver.com website under shop and under replacement parts. You'll be able to find it. Um, Check out the gadgets, guys. Check out the gadgets. Uh, play around with the dovetail gadget. Make a dovetail box or something. Uh, Peter Hearn called me in the morning at 9 o'clock. But also, if you get a chance, as soon as we get finished this class, give me a quick call. Uh, I, I just need, all I need is uh, two minutes of your time, Peter. And um, uh, give me, as soon as I say goodbye, Peter, and you see the video go away, then you can call me. Um, and... Uh, you guys, uh, I'll keep an eye out on the Facebook group. Any questions on, I'll try to answer them the best I can. Uh, you know, but y'all are doing a great job helping each other out. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for joining me for another uh, just kind of open Q&A class tonight with a little demonstration on some of those tools. The keyhole gadget, the chamfer gadget, and the dovetail gadget. Get to know your gadgets and uh, get the most use out of your Vetric software. Um, and until next time, I'll see you soon.